Philadelphia Eagles, after having their wings clipped by the Washington Redskins last week, take on the New York Giants in their newly acquired Franklin Field roost in the Quaker City. The Giants have the ball early in the opening period. Alex Webster cuts into the left side of the line. A loose pigskin is plucked out of the air by Philadelphia's Bob Hudson, who returns it to the Giant 35. Norm Van Brocklin, running wide to the right, heaves a perfectly timed swing pass into the arms of Clarence Peaks, and he races into the end zone for the TD, and the Birds take the lead 7-0. Chuck and Charlie Connerly waste little time getting the Giants into the battle as he completes an aerial to Frank Gifford for 19 yards. Connerly collaborates with Gifford again for a 39-yard pass play to culminate a 78-yard Giant drive that knots the count at 7-7. Later in the quarter, the New Yorkers are forced to punt. Billy Wells takes the high boot in Eagle territory. Bouncing off his own teammate, the on-rushing speedster spins into the open and with a timely block is on his way. Shaking off two tacklers, Wells tracks 65 yards before he's caught from behind by Jim Jelasek on the 14. Bobby Walston toes an 18-yard field goal through the uprights, and Philadelphia goes ahead 10-7. Second quarter action, Norm Van Brocklin passing for the Eagles. It's snared by giant Jim Patton. A dodging return nets 39 yards to the Eagles' 29. This break gives Pat Summerall a chance to make good a 29-yard field goal, and the visitors tie it up once again at 10-10. Watch this Eagle strike. Norm Van Brocklin, in the shadows of his own goalpost, teams up with Mercury-footed Tommy McDonald. Tommy's away for a 91-yard touchdown explosion and a 17-10 Eagle edge. Giants are on the move now as Chuck Connerly flips over the middle to Bob Schnelker on the Birds' two-yard stripe. Rookie fullback Phil King gets the call. King plunges over for the touchdown. Pat Summerall converts, and it's a 17-17 contest at halftime. The Eagles are red-dogging Charlie Connerly in the third quarter, but he pitches complete to Alex Webster, Alex streaks for 37 yards before he's tripped up by Tom Brookshire. Connerly hurriedly gets a pass off to Schnelker for 15 yards and a first down on the Eagles 16. Connerly under pressure fires through the goalpost to Kyle Rope to cap a 72 yard drive and give the Giants the lead for the first time this afternoon, 24 to 17. Ben Brocklin goes to the air, and Pete Retzlaff is on the receiving end, carrying 26 yards for a first down inside the Giant 20. On fourth and four, Van Brocklin calls for a field goal, and Bobby Walston obliges with a neat 19-yard boot. The Eagles trail 24 to 20. In the final quarter, Van Brocklin takes his time and throws. Pete Retzlaff comes in to make a beautiful falling catch on this 29-yard gainer. Van Brocklin's pass to Billy Barnes is almost intercepted, but Billy rips it away from his defender for a 17-yard advance. Walt Kowalczyk grabs Van Brocklin's aerial for four yards before being forced out of bounds just inches short of the goal line. Billy Barnes wedges straight ahead for one yard through the strong giant forward wall and the Eagles upset the Giants 27 to 24. The birds behind Van Brocklin should cause plenty of trouble as the season progresses. The San Francisco 49ers are in Philadelphia to challenge the Eagles to a showdown. Both clubs have had tough luck so far, and they're eager to break the jinx at one another's expense. 
The 49ers waste little time. John Brody fires a first period pass to Clyde Connor. Connor is cornered, then flips to R.C. Owens. R.C. rams to the Eagle 14 before a bird can bring him down. Hugh McElhenney bangs across for a touchdown. The prospectors lead 7 to nothing. The Eagles storm back. Billy Barnes races around end for a 23-yard gain to the San Francisco 49-yard line. Norm Van Brocklin decides to make his presence felt. He hits Dick Bielski with a 30-yard aerial. The Eagles' march cools off, but Bobby Walston boots a 29-yard effort to cut the prospector's advantage 7-3. to three. The Eagles want more. Barnes bucks and belts for six yards to the 49er 19. From the one, Barnes twists for six. The Eagles soar into the lead, 10-7. to 49er reprisal is quick. With the ball on the 49er 41, Brody connects with McElhenney. Hurry and you takes care of the rest. He pulls away with the aid of a key block by a teammate. The score standing up, and the 49ers vault to a 14-10 lead. Brody is throwing more bombs in the Eagles nest in the second quarter. He rifles a shot to Clyde Connor in the end zone and it's a 21 yard touchdown play. The prospectors pile up a 21 to 10 cushion. Van Brocklin is quick to stick some needles in the cushion. Tommy McDonald takes his pass and sprints for a 25 yard gain. Norm is ready to peel a few points off the prospectors bank roll. Norm nails Walston with a touchdown pass. The Eagles edge closer, they trail 21 to 17. 49ers with the ball, McElhenney wheels to the right, Hugh dances and prances down the sideline, then he hurdles a tackler and strides to the 49er, 46. John Brody retreats to look for a receiver. He finds Billy Wilson open. Wilson gathers in the toss for a 19-yard advance. Gordon Saltaw ends the first half scoring with a 28-yard field goal. Score, San Francisco 24, Philadelphia 17. It was a 41-point first half, but there's more to come. In the third period, John Brody hits the alley-oop man again. R.C. Owens catches for a 12-yard ad advantage. The Eagles get tough here, but golden-toed Gordy Saltaw bisects the bar from 32 yards out to give the prospectors a 10-point bulge, 27-17. In the final period, Van Brocklin engineers another eagle flight. A down and out pass to Pete Retzlaff. Nets 16 yards. The Dutchman hits Tommy McDonald on the goal line for an eagle score. Walston conversion makes it 27 to 24. The 49ers are back at work. Brody hits R.C. Owen for a first down. With nine minutes and 53 seconds remaining, Frankie Albert calls for another field goal. Salto obliges to give the 49ers a six-point lead, 30 to 24. What a spot for a second guesser. The Eagles fight desperately for a win. Billy Barnes smashes close to home as he fights his way to the Bay Area Boys 16-yard line. Van Brocklin finds Bobby Walston in the end zone for what appears to be the game-winning touchdown. But Bobby landed out of bounds, and it goes as an incomplete pass. The 49ers, paced by McElhenney's running and catching, win a thriller to record their second victory of the season by a 30 to 24 count over the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers renew an ancient rivalry at Green Bay. The Packers' hopes ride on the return to form of Babe Pirelli, while the Eagles feature the arm of Norm Van Brocklin. When a Packer first period drive fails to materialize, Paul Harning puts his foot to a 30-yard field goal. The Packers draw first blood, three to nothing. In the second quarter, Green Bay moves to its 47 via a Pirelli to Bill Houghton connection. Babe warms up the wing and lets fly a long one. Max McGee outscrambles the defenders to haul it in. It's a 34-yard touchdown play for the Packers. They hold a 10 to nothing edge. With the ball on their 30, the Eagles claw their way back into the game. Billy Barnes fights off one tackler after another. His determination pays off as he streaks for pay dirt, and the Eagles cut the margin to 10-7 in the second quarter. The 
Packers unleash a yard-eating fullback named Howie Ferguson. He rumbles through the secondary for a 14-yard pickup. Howie didn't attend college, but he sure learned how to pack the pigskin. He rides her to the Eagles' two-yard line. From here, the Packer pounder dumps another egg in the Eagles nest. Green Bay vaults to a 17-7 lead. Norm Van Brocklin sends the bird soaring back into the thick of things. Norm spears Tommy McDonald for a first down on the Packer 8. Van Brocklin fires a pass into the end zone and McDonald wraps it up to pull the Eagles to within three points of the Packers at the half. The count reads, Green Bay 17, Philadelphia 14, but this means nothing in the wild and woolly National Football League. In the third period, Pirelli gets the Packers on the move with a pitch to Al Carmichael, who gets to the Eagle 25. Pirelli fades back and throws a touchdown to Carmichael. The Packers increase their lead to 24 to 14 in the third quarter. Green Bay regains possession and Pirelli seems to have regained his touch. He fires a 15 yard pass to Gary Canaffel on the Philadelphia 15. The Packers continue their touchdown binge. Pirelli hooks up with Canaffel again to boost the Packer margin to 31 to 14. The Packers can do no wrong in the third period. Don McElhenney crashes through to the Eagle 25 for a 12 yard gain. Pirelli passes for his third touchdown of the quarter. Max McGee grabs it to give the Packers a 38 to 14 lead. The Eagles begin to click in the fourth period. Van Brocklin passes to Gene Mitchum for a first down on the Green Bay 13. Van Brocklin pinpoints Billy Wells on the three yard line. Bill Wells fights into pay dirt. The Eagles cut the deficit to 38 to 21. Van Brocklin takes charge later in the quarter. He finds Pete Retzlaff open for a 49 yard gain to the Green Bay 15. Norm flings a pass to Gene Mitchum. He has it. The Eagles now trail 38 to 28. The Eagles are putting the pressure on the Packers. The Eagles hold the Packers and start another drive. Van Brocklin hoists an aerial to Retzlaff for a 21 yard advance to the Packer 30. This time, the Van Brocklin Retzlaff combination gives the Philadelphians a first down on the 19. Van Brocklin keeps the Eagles' comeback fight rolling with a 19-yard touchdown pass to Tommy McDonald. The score is 38 to 35 in favor of the Packers, but time runs out on the Eagles, and Green Bay manages to hold on to pull out a squeaker. The Philadelphia Eagles wing their way into Comiskey Park in Chicago to do battle with the Cardinals. They'll be getting their first glimpse of Coach Pop Ivey's razzle-dazzle double-wing tee attack. Early in the opening period, veteran quarterback Lamar McCann deceives our cameraman, but not Eagle Eddie Bell, who intercepts on the Cardinal 38. Norm Van Brocklin behind a strong offensive wall, lifts a 35-yard aerial to Pete Retzlaff, and the Eagles are inside the five-yard line. Billy Barnes caroms over the opposition to break the ice for the Eagles in the first period. Score, seven to nothing. In the second stands, of Van Brocklin fires to Tommy McDonald, but rookie halfback Bobby Conrad comes up from the Cardinal secondary to intercept and charges to the Eagle 18 before being driven out of bounds. The slow motion camera gives you a chance to watch another Redbird rookie, M.C. Reynolds, the former LSU star, hurl a touchdown pass to Joe Childress in the end zone. The Chicagoans have the equalizer, and at halftime, the count stands at 7-7. In the third period, M.C. Reynolds pitches out to Ollie Matson. 
Number 81, Eddie Bell, can't stop the oncoming speedster, and he gallops past two defenders, scampering 55 yards for the score. The Cardinals spread their wings with a 14-7 lead. The Cardinal double wing T works to perfection as M.C. Reynolds goes up the alley and sweeps to the sidelines. The Eagles' Bob Hudson finally cuts M.C. down after a 50-yard rush to the Eagles' 24-yard strike. Rolling back to pass, M.C. Reynolds spots Ali Matson near the goal line. Bob Hudson spoils the proceedings with an interception returning to his own 19-yard line. Late in the third period, the cards have penetrated to the Eagle 35. Reynolds completes a peg to Woodley Lewis, and the cards are all stacked up on the Eagle 18. Reynolds deals his own hand this time as he shoots through the gap and sidesteps to the one-yard line on an eight-yard salvo. Reynolds' teammate helps him across, but that isn't allowed, and the result is a 15-yard penalty that sends them back to the 16. The dauntless quarterback winds up and hits Woodley Lewis, Woodley carries five yards to pay dirt, and the cards extend their point production to 21-7 early in the fourth quarter. The Eagles go airborne with Van Brocklin passing to Walt Kowalczyk in the flat. The former Michigan State All-American powers 14 yards before being forced out of bounds on the Cardinal two. Van Brocklin moves the Eagles back into the thick of things with a beauty to Pete Retzlaff in the end zone. Cards 21, Eagles 14. With less than a minute remaining, the cards are forced into a punting situation. Bobby Gordon seems about to give up a safety, but sees daylight and elects to run out to the 21. It's not enough for the first down, and the Eagles take over. Van Brocklin throws a short pass to Walt Kowalczyk, who reverses his field and springs to the Cardinal 8. On fourth and one, Van Brocklin arches the ball to Dick Bielski for the final touchdown. The Eagles pull even to gain a 21-21 tie with a great fourth quarter comeback. It's the second meeting of the season for the Philadelphia Eagles and the Chicago Cardinals, and Philadelphia's Franklin Field is the battleground. The Eagles and the Cards tied in their last outing, and both want this one badly. Eagles with the ball in Cardinal country. Van Brocklin flips a quickie to Billy Barnes, and Bill hurdles a tackler en route to a 10-yard gain. It's third and goal to go as Van Brocklin calls on top Eagle rookie Walt Kowalczyk. The ex-Spartan of Michigan State has the game's first tally. The Eagles lead 7-0. Early in the second period, Lamar McCann is trying to get the cards back in the game. His pitch to Woodley Lewis is good for 18 yards and a first down. On the Eagle 10, McCann again elects the overhead route. He has Joe Childress's number for the score. Chicago ties it up at 7-all. The Eagles aren't settling for a tie today. Norm Van Brocklin hits Billy Ray Barnes, and Billy Ray makes the play pay off to the tune of 31 yards. The Eagles' peerless pigskin pitcher is red hot, and so are the rest of the Eagles. Norm finds the range to Clarence Peaks. The former Michigan State star storms down the sideline and dives into pay dirt. The Eagles take the lead at 14 to 7. The Quaker City men take advantage of an interception to threaten again. Billy Barnes takes a pitch out and knifes his way for 25 yards. Barnes, who played his college ball at Wake Forest, decides to pass on this play, and Tommy McDonald makes a brilliant catch on the Chicago one. Clarence Peaks gets a shot at his second touchdown of the day. Peaks makes good, and the Philadelphia lead mounts to 21-7. Van Brocklin and his eagle mates are having too much fun to stop. Norm hits the league's leading receiver, Pete Retzlaff, who races all the way to the Cardinal 13. It's Van Brocklin again. This time, Dick Bielski grabs it, and the Eagles move a step closer to the Cardinals' promised land. It's that Peaks boy again. Clarence crashes into the end zone for his third touchdown as the Eagles swell the margin to 28-7. 
The Cards take over and Lamar McCann renews his air attack on the birds. His pass is snared deftly by Woodley Lewis who goes out on the Philadelphia two. Three plays later the Cardinals run the Eagles beef blockade. Mal Hammock dives in for the score. At the half the Chicago Cardinals still trail the Eagles 28 to 14. In the third period it's the tireless right arm of Van Brocklin swinging again. This pass is good to Tommy McDonald and the ex ex Oklahoma great gallop 47 yards for the touchdown. The birds are putting on their best offensive show of the season as they lead Chicago 35 to 14. This kind of repetition doesn't bore the Philadelphia fans so the dashing Dutchman and Tommy McDonald get together again. Tommy after a great catch tosses the ball to the official but the whistle hasn't blown and Tom recovers quickly to save himself from committing the blooper of the year. From the eight Van Brocklin hits Pete Retzlaff cutting for the end zone. Pete is stopped just one yard shy. But High Peaks has the power to penetrate these goal line pileups. He's up and over for his fourth touchdown of the game and the Eagles lead 42 to 14. In the fourth quarter M.C. Reynolds is now at quarterback. He tosses a touchdown strike to Woodley Lewis to give Chicago exactly half as many points as Philadelphia. Eagles 42 cards 21. But the birds bounce right back with the game's longest play. Halfback Billy Barnes starts left stops and fires a tremendous toss downfield. Bobby Walston is behind the drawn in defenders to gather in the ball and sprint home safely on a 71 yard play for the final score of the day. The fired up Philadelphians crush the Cardinals 49 to 21 in a game replete with touchdown thrill. The Cleveland Browns a game in front of the New York Giants in the Eastern Conference can clinch a tie for the title by taking the Eagles today on their home ground. If the Giants should lose, the Browns are in. But with 36,000 fans cheering them on, the Philadelphians are primed for an upset. The frozen turf of Franklin Field provides a rock-hard playing surface as the Clevelanders go to work. Milt Plum flips to Jim Brown in the flat, and the great fullback flashes for 26 yards. The Eagles are having a tough time holding Brown. Jim jars them again as he bursts over right tackle to battle to a first down on the Eagle 37. Quarterback Milt Plum races back and shoots a pass over the middle. Dow Brewster gets away to make the grab and leaves his defender in the dirt as he rips away for a 24-yard gain that makes it goal to go. Plum pulls the wool over the Eagles' eyes as he rolls out as if to pass, but keeps right on going. Plum picks his way into the end zone for the score. The Browns make it look easy as they drive 80 yards in five plays to take a 7-0 lead. Cleveland tries for another quick counter with Plum passing, but the Eagles' Pellegrini plucks this Plum toss out of the air and gallops back to the Brown 38. Norm Van Brocklin takes charge of the Eagle attack. He pitches a strike to Pete Retzlaff for a 16-yard game. The birds are set back by a penalty, but Van Brocklin has his sights set on the goal line. Tom McDonald is downfield in time to pull in the pass for a touchdown. It's a 26-yard score as the Eagles pull even at 7-7. Brown ground game is chewing up the Eagle line. Lou Carpenter gets a good block from Jim Brown to pick up 10 yards of Philadelphia territory. Milt Plum, whose passing has been sharp, takes off on one of his fleet-footed rollout runs, and before the Eagles can corner him, Plum is on to the one. Plum takes one step back and plows over his own left guard to give the lead back to Cleveland. After one quarter, the Browns are on top 14 to 7. Late in the second period, the Eagles are driving to tie. Van Brocklin finds peaks available for a short one and hits them for 11 yards. Here's a play that has worked well for Philadelphia. It's a slant in pass to Tommy McDonald for a first down in Cleveland territory. It's the same play with Billy Barnes streaking in from the other side to take the Dutchman's pass to the Browns 25 for another first down. The Eagles pull a fake draw play with Peaks pitching back to Van Brocklin. Norm takes aim on Pete Retzlaff and hits him on the Cleveland four. The Philadelphians have a couple more tricks in the bag. Billy Barnes starts on an end sweep but suddenly pegs on the run to Tommy McDonald in the end zone. At halftime, the troublesome Eagles have the Browns over a barrel with a 14-14 tie. In the third quarter, the Eagles are at it again. Bill Barnes takes the ball wide, cuts back, 
and races away for a 40-yard gain. Norm Van Brocklin goes to the air, and right there, the Browns take a hand in things. The hand belongs to Vince Costello, who deflects the pass. Don Paul grabs it, and Cleveland has the ball. Brown send Luke Carpenter slashing around right end for a 14-yard gain. Milt Plum has a hot hand with a football today. He steps back and passes to Ray Renfro. Ray gets away from his man to pull it in and hustle unhindered into the end zone for the winning touchdown. <laughs> 